death toll in Gaza today after 10 days of aerial bombardment on this third day of Israel's ground invasion, now estimated at more than 540 dead, 200 of them at least civilians. With world leaders flying to the Middle East, working the phones for a ceasefire, only one voice in the global community said today, let's not stop the bloodshed too quickly now. Our third story tonight, another Bush debacle bequeathed to the president-elect Barack Obama. Before the end of last year's ceasefire, Israel sent soldiers into Gaza claiming to stop plans for a terrorist operation there. Hamas, which took power in Gaza after winning the 2006 elections, responded to the Israeli incursion by renewing its random rocket attacks on Israel and escalating them once the ceasefire officially ended. Israel says its invasion this weekend is intended to ensure that Hamas can no longer use its rocket staging grounds to attack Israeli targets, but some Israeli officials have been quoted as saying the goal is to end Hamas rule of Gaza altogether. After blocking a UN ceasefire resolution this weekend, Mr. Bush today blamed Hamas exclusively for the violence and made his first public comments about a possible ceasefire. I know people are saying uh, let's have a ceasefire and that, that, that those are noble ambitions. But any ceasefire must have the conditions in it so that Hamas does not use Gaza as a place from which to launch rockets. So, uh, uh, no ceasefire unless it ceases the firing. Backed by Mr. Bush, Israel, too, is rejecting calls for a ceasefire until its objectives are achieved, making this invasion likely to continue until it joins the other Bush legacies landing on the desk of President-to-be Obama on January 20th. Let's turn now to Hillary Mann Leverett, the former director for Iran and Persian Gulf Affairs at the National Security Council, who also served in the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv and spent considerable time in Gaza. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. This is obviously a third rail politically worldwide because the two sides only agree on the one thing, that the other guy is not only 100 percent wrong, but has been 100 percent wrong for 2,500 years. But uh, right. give, me, give me your thoughts on, on the Bush statement today and what U.S. role, ha uh, the role we have had in this current con con uh, crisis, because yeah, did Israel move because it got a knowing green light from us, or was there an unwitting open window? How, how, did we, uh, how were we involved in this? Well, there was an effective green light. There was a ceasefire in place until December 19th, and the Bush administration actively um, discouraged the parties, particularly Israel, from renewing that ceasefire because they didn't want to legitimate Hamas in any way. They wanted to work with Palestinians that we like, the quote-unquote good Palestinians in the West Bank. So they didn't want to do anything to encourage Hamas and Israel to renew a ceasefire that could actually become something more lasting and enduring. For President Bush to now come out and say a week later, nearly 500 people dead, more than 500 people dead, to grudgingly acknowledge that maybe a ceasefire with some conditions is warranted is, you know, it's maybe what Sarah Palin would call word trickery. Mm. A ceasefire was necessary immediately. An immediate ceasefire is what was needed to get monitors in, to get peacekeepers in, to ease the blockade, to get humanitarian goods into, into the people in Gaza. Something that's more lasting and enduring is not a ceasefire. That would be maybe an armistice or negotiations that lead, could lead to a resolution and settlement of the conflict. That would be enduring and lasting. A ceasefire, by definition, is, is, is not that, and it's really, I, I would call it word trickery. Well, say we did get an armistice, to use your term, uh, even by the, by the end of tomorrow. This would obviously mm -hmm. not be resolved in full by the time of the change in the presidents. Uh, what, what will Obama have to do? What will his options be as of the 20th? Well, he really should be coming out now with a statement of sympathy for all those who have been killed, Palestinians and Israelis. The fact that he's silent is resonating very strongly throughout the Middle East. The fact that he came out with a statement after the Mumbai attacks but will not say anything um, about what, what Israel is doing in Gaza is something that's resonating very strongly in a region where U.S. credibility is at its low point. So I think he does need to come out with an immediate statement of at least sympathy for those who have died. When he comes into office, he has to do something even stronger to signal uh, a departure from Bush administration policies. What I think is would be critically important would be for the United States to finally come out and say that we support pal efforts for Palestinian reconciliation, for there to be some sort of Palestinian national unity government. That would that would that would mean that we would recognize and deal with a government um, of the Palestinians that included Hamas, something that Saudi Arabia tried to broker last year and we vetoed.
And the other thing that will change, if not on the 20th and shortly thereafter, obviously, is the identity of the Secretary of State. And here is Hillary Clinton coming in in the middle of this with a with a last name, certainly, that is uh, to some degree uh, magical, influential, at least in the Middle East. How is her appointment going to shape um, Obama's efforts for uh, Middle East peace and how will it be received by both sides in the Middle East? Well, her, her name is magical and influential to, a, to an extent in Israel, mm -hmm. but throughout many, many capitals in the Arab world, um, where I served at the U.S. Embassy in Cairo and in the Gulf, there's a lot more skepticism that she's going to be even-handed. And there's considerable fear about the, um, the advisors that she's going to bring with her, people like Martin Indyk or Dennis Ross or Ken Pollack, people that I would call neoconservative fellow travelers, people who brought, it up, brought us a failed peace process between the Israelis and Palestinians by the end of the Clinton term in 2000 people who cheered and championed the invasion of Iraq um, under this administration. There's a lot of fear and consternation that the advisors in particular that Hillary Clinton is bringing with her um, are going to are going to make us long for for the Bush days. Hmm. Goodness. Uh, Hillary Mann Leverett, former member of the National Security Council, as always. Great thanks for your insight into, into this this stuff.